Midat Chasidut that Hashem has is not just for Jews only, it's also for Gentiles. Anybody that does, does above and beyond. Let's give you an example of how above and beyond for, at certain times of your life is a lot less than you think. Many years ago, there was a big Chacham in Tunis. His name was Rav Tzemach Tzarfati. Rav Tzemach Tzarfati was a Talmud Chacham dedicated to Torah, Ish Tzadik. He used to wake up at midnight every day and start his day at midnight. How do you start his day? Learning Torah. And in those days, you didn't have electricity and things that we have of today. So if you wanted to light fire, it was a process to have a fire. So many people would have a candle on all the time. One night, Rav Tzarfati saw that to his dismay, the uh, candle that he has on at all times got turned out. It's the middle of the night. What am I going to do? I can't just go knock on people's doors. On the other end, I have to learn Torah. Torah is on the line. I'm going to go next door to the bakery. The Gentile that works over there, I'm going to ask him to light my uh, candle. So, Rav Tzemach Tzarfati goes, middle of the night, knocks on the door, doesn't work, knocks a little bit more, and then all of a sudden he hears a voice, a very tired voice, who's there? Rav Tzarfati says, oh, it's, it's me, Tzemach Tzarfati, the, the, the rabbi. Gentile gets out of bed, goes, picks up this really heavy plank, opens the doors, yes, for the Rav. And the Rav says, I'm sorry to bother you, I know it's late at night, but my candle is out, I need to learn Torah, please, light my candle. He lets him inside, it was a very, very cold night, and he lights his candle, and the Rav says, thank you very much, and he leaves. After literally halfway to get into his house, wind comes, the candle's out. Shem Yishmo Rav Tzalfati feels bad, but what am I going to do? I have to learn Torah. He goes back to the bakery. Knocks on the door. Oh, it's... Tzemach Tzafati, the, the, the rabbi, please open the door for me. My, my candle is out. The guy opens the door, lights his candle. Okay, good night. He takes five, six steps. Candle's out. He doesn't know what can I do. Gets the courage. Goes back in there. Knocks on the door. It's me, Tzemach Tzafati. Please, please. My candle is out. Rabbi, I need to sleep. Rabbi. I know, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not on purpose, I'm really sorry, please. Opens the door, lifts the plank, heavy as can be, lights his candle, okay. He gets halfway to his house and the candle is out a fourth time. Now, this time already, four times, the rabbi is embarrassed, He's, he doesn't even understand what to do, but at the same token, Torah is on the line. What other option do I have? Yeah, but you're causing somebody anguish. Yeah, you're right. Sechet nezikim. How do I not cause people anguish? Yeah, but this, but that. And you start arguing in your head. The Chacham Tzafati argued in his head and said, I got to go back one more time. Goes a fourth time to the bakery. He knocks on the door. And the baker says, I'm not opening the door. Go away. The rabbi starts begging, please, please, I beg you, please, please. After some begging, the uh, baker says, okay, fine. He gets up, he's exhausted, because not only is he tired from a long day now, he starts lifting this huge plank. It's like lifting a whole tree every time. And he opens the door and he says, rabbi, look at this plank, look at this wood that I have to lift. Every time I open the door, please, rabbi, let me sleep. It's heavy. I'm tired. Rabbi, for the first time, sees what this goy has to do to lift the door. And the Rabbi Fati gives the goy a blessing. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless you to give you this weight in gold. And you have a lot of success. You become very rich. Goy is so happy. He never got such a blessing from a Talmud Chacham. And he knows this blessing from a Talmud Chacham. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to answer it. Even though he's not Jewish, he knows that HaKadosh Baruch Hu listens to the Chachamim. Kabbalah Masechet Sukkah, page 14, says, A Chacham, a Talmud Chacham, a Tzadik, makes a blessing, HaKadosh Baruch Hu changes nature for them. The guy is so excited about this, all of a sudden he doesn't care that he just had to lift this thing for the fourth time, 50 times. He is as happy as can be, Ishtabach Shino. He lights his candle, he goes on his way, and Rav Tzarfati goes, learns Torah. A little... A while later, maybe about a week or two later, 
this baker is in the market, and all of a sudden this very honorable person comes up to him, says, hey, you, you want to work? The baker says, what? He goes, you can't work for me. I'll pay you a lot of money. How much money? He says, I'll pay you 10 times whatever you make right now. How much do you make? He says, I make two real a day. He says, okay, no problem. I'll pay you 20. And he sees the guy's clothes are worth more than his house. So okay, fine. You got to come with me. So he goes to his boss. He tells him, listen, I'm sorry. I have to have a job. I have to have an opportunity, but I'll come back. I'll come back, but I have to go take this opportunity. He pays me more money. So he lets him go. He goes and follows this rich man. And after they walk and they go and they're on the carriage and so on, and at some point he says to him, okay, if you don't mind, I'm going to take this handkerchief that I have. I have to cover your eyes. Why? He says, because I don't want you to know how to get to where we're going. It's a secret and I don't need anybody to know. So fine. He puts the handkerchief, covers his eyes. A little while later, they get to a place and he gets into a house. He says, okay, Khan, he takes off the handkerchief and he opens up his eyes and he sees a room full of boxes. Every single one of them is full of gold coins. The rich man says to him, listen, this is why I had to cover your, your face. Now the job is, I need you to sort out all the different coins. I have coins from all different places, but I need to sort them out. So you have to sort every single one of them. You need to be here for probably about a week. I left you all food and everything that you need and drinks and everything to be here. And I'll come back and pick you up when the job is over. Okay. So this baker starts working, separating everything. There's a lot of money in there and he's doing his job. He says, oh, Baruch Hashem, you know, the, the rabbi blessed me. I'm going to make money. And now, okay, look, I already have uh, 10 times my living. Already things are looking good. Okay, fine. He's working, working, working. After a week or two worth of work, and the, uh, the rich man not only pays him the money, but even gives him a bonus. Ah, oh, Hashem, he goes on his way. And he goes back to the bakery. A short while later, literally a matter of days, there's an announcement in the street. Attention, government message. Here, here, there is a auction that will take place tomorrow at such and such time. At such and such address. What's the auction? Whoever wants to buy this property is going to be able to bid because the owner was a person that uh, came from out of town who was living in this very beautiful property and died. And he left no descendants and therefore the government does not want to deal with this property. They don't have anybody that needs it. And therefore the government would rather just take the money and sell the property. So, whoever wants to buy the property is welcome. The baker heard this. He said, you know, I wish I could buy this property. Maybe I could put a down payment on it and it'll give me some time to get the property. He decides, you know what? Let me go look. The next day, everybody gathers and they see the property. The baker is astonished that when he sees the property, he says, this is it. This is where I worked for those two weeks. This is the place. Now he wants to go see, but the whole place is blocked off. No one is allowed to go inside. You buy the property as is. Whatever, all the furniture and everything that's in it comes with the property. If there's problems, it's your problems. And he says to himself, the rabbi's blessing is coming true. This is the property, but I'm going to buy it. So they start the auction. One of the rich people there says, I'll pay 500 500 gold coins. Another guy says, I'll pay a thousand. Next guy says, 1500. Another one says, 2000. Then all of a sudden, the baker says, 10,000 real. 10,000 real is a lot of money, but it's not uh, millions. It's a lot of money. But the rich people are looking at him and they see this guy with clothes like a homeless person. They start laughing. Oh, who's this guy? Is he crazy? He's making fun of us. And they're so baffled by the fact that this poor guy is bidding on the property that they don't even pay attention to the auction going. No one bids and he ends up winning the bid. <laughs> Offer of 10,000. So now he has some money that he made from working for the guy. And he says to the guy, hey, I'll give you here some money. That's what I have on me. I'll give you the rest tomorrow. The government member doesn't care. Okay, fine. Here's the minute. This is yours. Here's the keys. 
The baker goes inside, goes into the room, opens up, and he sees gold everywhere. And he knows that the rabbi, Tzemach Tzarfati's blessing came true. He became filthy rich, but he's scared that if everybody finds out that this is what he has, they take it away from him. So quickly, he pays everything to pay for the property, pays for the next day, and he starts a new mission to transfer all of the money to Turkey, to Istanbul. Slowly but surely, he moves everything to Istanbul where nobody knows him, and he becomes the richest man of the land over there. Years pass, and Rav Tzemach Tzarfati decides that he's going to make Aliyah from Tunis to Eretz Yisrael. Although the Keilah is not happy that their rabbi is leaving, they all f- say farewell to him, and a few of them go with him. They get on a boat, they start traveling, and at some point they have to stop over in Istanbul, Turkey, in order to get some more food and water for, for the rest of the trip. And Rav Tzemach Tzarfati and his uh, few Tamidi get off the ship. As they get off and they start walking, all of a sudden they see a whole entourage surrounding a very rich man. And all of a sudden the rich man sees Rav Tzarfati. He runs, moves everybody aside, splitting the ocean, runs to Rav Tzemach Tzarfati and falls on his face, bowing to the rabbi, kissing his feet and his hands. The rabbi doesn't know who this guy is. He says, Rabbi, me, you remember me? I'm the baker. I'm the baker. You gave me a blessing. HaKadosh Baruch Hu made it real. He tells him the story. He gives the rabbi a very big gift. And he also says, you take this also for your Talmidim and Yerushalayim. And I'm going to send you money every month. Rav Tzarfati says to him, as long as you're going to be good to the Jewish people, HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the blessing of the Rav of Talmit Chacham came. Why? First and foremost, if you're going to do what HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, that's already a good thing. You tzaddik, it's already a good thing. But if you're going to do this above and beyond for the sake of Torah, the blessing that a person can make. Does above and beyond only apply to a Jew? No, it also applies to a non-Jew. Does it have to be above and beyond like you have to lift a mountain over your head? Not necessarily. Look at the example of this story, a real story. All he did is wake up four times, lift something that was extremely heavy in order for the rabbi to learn more Torah. It's not exactly such a big deal. The question is, at the moment of truth, where Hashem sends you that opportunity, would you have done the same thing? Some people say, yeah, of course I would do it. Just give me the same thing. But who says Hashem is going to give you the same exact test? Hashem gives everybody a test in their own level, in their own time. Make sure you know. If you start working on yourself now to be not just a tzaddik, to be a chassid in every way that you can, to do above and beyond in every way that you can. Of course, do everything you need to do. But if you can do more sometimes, do more sometimes. If all you can do is what you need to do, then do that, of course. But the point being is, anytime you have an opportunity to do more, do more. Let me know uh, what you think and make sure to share it because other people need to learn too.